Okay, we have a trigonometric problem here, and the trigonometric problem is that we have got to consider a graph, and then we've got to consider solving an equation. Now, the graph we've got to consider is this thing, 5 sine of 3 of x, and our big question is, if we do 5 times the sine of 3 of x, what does the 5 do to the graph, and what does the 3 do to the graph? Um, I'm just going to quickly show this on a graphing, graphing calculator. Here's my graphic calculator, and what I can see on the screen here is I can see sine of x. Sine of x has a full period, it does one cycle in 360 degrees. If I put in a new equation here, so I will put in y equals... Um, let, me, let me do 5 sine of x. And what you'll see there very distinctly is that the, the amplitude, the height of the curve, has, has got bigger. In fact, stretched a factor of 5. Let me now just put that 3 in and see what happens. And immediately what you see is the amplitude has stayed the same, but the period has changed. It's compressed the curve. And in fact, sine of 3x does a cycle in a third of the time of sine of x. And so that should allow me to go back and sketch this thing. So let me get my pen going on this. What I'm looking at is I'm looking at a sine curve. There we go. It's perhaps not the best sine curve I've ever drawn, but it will do. And what I can say about this is that the amplitude has got stretched from 5 or 2, 5 to minus 5. Normally, this point here would be a full cycle every 360, but sine 3 of x, 360 divided 3, that will be cycling in 120. That means that will be 60. And if that's 60, this puts me at 180, just there. So I have my sine curve looking something like that. Maximum, minimum points next. Maximum, minimum points. I can see these here. And it seems to me that I've got some quite nice symmetry going on to this. 30 there, and that must be at 5. This one, I would say, looks to be at 150. And 5. And this one. I would say this minimum value down here, this must be at 90 and minus 5. And those are my maximum minimum points. And finally, and I've got to solve an equation now, I need f of x, 5 sine of 3 of x, I need that to equal 2.5. Let me divide both sides by 5. 2.5 divided by 5 is a half. Sine of 3x equals a half. As with lots of these, we've seen this before, ignore the 3x. What we're looking for is angles that have a sine of one half. And angles that have a sine of one half, well, inverse sine of a half, the first one I'll get is 30 degrees. The question is, where are the others? Um, if we think of our circle, as we go around our circle, then we will find the first one at 30 degrees, and then we will know we can consider these ones. So the first one is at 30 degrees, and as we go round, then we have to consider they're all sine 0.5 but we'll get plus 0.5 and minus 0.5. This one here, um, cosine is positive, which means sine would be negative. I don't want that one. This one here, everything's positive, so sine is 0.5. This one here, S, sine is positive, so that's the other one that I want. And down here, tangent is positive, so that I don't want. So I have 
30 degrees and I have this one here which is 30 degrees short of 180 150 so those two angles there both give me sine of the angle to be 0.5 and if I use the other two I will get sine of the angle is minus 0.5 not something I want once I've got my initial pair add 360 on to give me any extras that I require and what I will find add 360 on 390 and add 360 on 510 and I will be getting my x values at this point just quick reference to my graph this is quite useful because it will tell me how many I'm expecting to find and it looks to me like I want four values so 10 degrees that's this one down here Fifty degrees, that's that one there. And keeping going, one hundred and thirty degrees, this one here, and finally this one just back here, one hundred and seventy degrees. One seventy there. So I have my four values and that is my problem solved.